Hey guys, this is the Ecron Writer here, and welcome to my first ever countdown. Video games have an insane plethora of animals, much like the real world we live in. And let me tell ya, I am an animal lover. In fact, my favorites usually lie with foxes, rhinos, or the cheetahs, just to name a few. And since my all-time favorite YouTuber, Fawful's Minion, is a fanatic with them, and because the Green Scorpion has made a list himself, they have inspired me to do my very own. So I present to you my top 10 animals in video games. Much of the same rules apply here, only from games I played, one per franchise, and they must be based on actual animals, anthropomorphic or not. So no make-believe creatures like dragons, pegasuses, or any hybrid of the sort. So, let's take a look in this virtual safari, and let's get this rolling. Starting off this list and just barely making the cutting board, we have the chubby penguin of the Kirby series, King DDD. He's usually classified as a penguin that causes mayhem, as he's the self-proclaimed king in Dreamland. He also happens to be Kirby's arch-rival, always stealing his food and wreaking havoc. Ever since his debut in Kirby's Dreamland, he has appeared in nearly every game in the series. However, he wasn't always Kirby's greatest adversary. He's gullible, chunky, and a gluttonous creature, but there were some epic moments he has done. Whenever they're not in a conflict, DDB provides Kirby with some help against bigger bats, such as Dark Matter, Magalore, or even Nightmare. You see, he responds with greed than malice, whether stealing all the food or being in debt owing Nightmare money. King DDD has also made appearances in the Smash Bros. series, but, contrary to popular belief, his first appearance was actually in the Dreamland stage as a background character flying around. Alas, he was cut due to time constraints. Plus, he didn't make it into Melee as a playable character, just as a trophy. Then, he made his official appearance since Brawl. He still functions as one of the tanks since, alongside Bowser and Ganondorf. Although, his major moment of epicness was when he sided with all the fighters against Taboo. He invents special brooches that can turn Smashers back if they're all trophies. At one point, he was ambushed by Bowser, but he was saved thanks to Ness and Luigi after Taboo consumes the world. Thanks to his brooches, he was able to turn everyone else, aside from Kirby, back to normal and leads them through the subspace maze. By the time Taboo was defeated by Sonic, DDD wasn't proven as much of a villain after all. Since then, King DDD has been acclaimed as one of the best fighters in Smash, as well as a valuable ally to Kirby in some games. The funny thing is, why is he still Kirby's rival? I guess since every villain had one chance to shine, therefore he should still be a constant, right? Oh well, I consider DDD as an anti-hero than anything else, much like Fawful's minion in Rabbit Luigi. Thus, he takes the number 10 spot on my list. The Metroid series seems to have a couple animals, despite most of them being aliens. The Chozo are similar to birds, Metroids are jellyfish, and the Jacoras are ostrich-like while the Edicoons are like monkeys. These adorable Takoras and Edicoons often appear together and have made their first appearance in Super Metroid. As Samus finds them in a lower portion of Criteria at Planet Zebus, the Takoras actually teach her a thing or two. They run back and forth in a long corridor gaining speed then leap into great heights. With the speed booster, Samus is able to learn that game great boot technique. The Edicoons are also approached by Samus at the same spot, 
and they often chirp the item acquisition theme as they teach her the wall jump ability. After Samus defeated Mother Brain, the planet begins to self-destruct, and the poor creatures were trapped till the heroine frees them as their home was being flooded by rapid magma. Later on in Metroid Fusion, Samus has been reported of some survivors located in the Habit Sector at the Biological Space Laboratory. It was completely infested by the X-Parasites as well as the SAX. Samus soon finds them on the habitation deck and frees them, although it was unknown as to why they were held captive. It's believed they could have been used as bait and test subjects for the X-Parasites. Thank goodness they were saved yet again and were stationed inside her ship. Also, after Samus sets the auto-destruct sequence, someone unseen pilots her ship and escorts her out. Turns out it was those adorable creatures all along. Aww. These guys have always been a few of my all-time favorite characters in the Metroid franchise. Thus they take the number 9 spot. Octoman from the F-Zero series has always been one of my favorites the second I saw him. I mean, talk about a cephalopod driving a car, and it's just two of his six arms piloting it. It was just incredible to see. Octoman is, well, an octopus who's from planet Takora, and the writer of the Deep Claw. Ever since his debut in F-Zero X, he happens to be poverty-ridden as his world was attacked by the Galactic Space Federation. His mission is to receive prize money in order to restore Takora, as well as his children there. Unfortunately, Captain Falcon has always beaten him to it. In the anime, though, he's one of Zoda's cronies who works for Dark Million, an evil organization established by the Emperor of Brutality, Black Shadow. He had his chance to shine in the episode Octoman's Dream, when he wanted to represent Takora and let his inhabitants cause a little trouble in Mute City on Earth. I wasn't too fond of the lap, but I did make him as a tragic villain in my stories, as he volunteered to work for Black Shadow as an act of vengeance against the Federation. Octoman does change his treacherous ways, instead of still working for the maniacal mutant. Regardless, he's been an interesting pilot to use, and his machine, the Deep Claw, is rumored to be at the top of the tier as the very best machine. I wish Octoman's story would be explored more, and so he coincidentally takes the spot at number 8. General Bristol is a deceased warus from Fur Fighters, as well as the hero's mentor and spiritual guide. Much like Optiman, he too is a very unique and sometimes misunderstood individual. He often teaches the fighters on how to defend themselves, along with his assistant, Sergeant Sternhauser, at the Undermill, and he can be a very stern guy, even when they should waste their time shooting him. After all, he is an apparition. I would say he has passed on during Vigo's first encounter before the game took place. Otherwise, how would he along with Rufus know who the Greyhound was, right? Bristol appears in every level in the game, excepting the flea rounds in the versus fluff matches. Much like Taj from Diddy Kong Racing, he does give the hero some pointers on defeating the enemy even when the player struggles in how to defeat various bosses. The brainwashed animals that Vigo controls who happens to be Bristol's kin. He does seem to have a strict personality, but he still helps the team as they progress, even giving them train tokens. Aside from Captain Falcon, Bristol seems to have a perfect mix between being a mentor as well as a veteran, a protective badass nature with a pure heart and I wish he'd be considered more often by fans and developers alike. And so, he takes the seventh spot on my animal inventory. It's 
It's a shame we don't get to see a lot of actual animals in the Final Fantasy universe. I would say the chocobos as they are large chickens, but they hadn't been considered. I would also go with Naming Way, but I saved him for a topic for another day. We often see monsters, dragons, or even hybrids of multiple animals, such as the behemoth or the moogles. But... Does anyone actually consider man's best friend? Case in point, Interceptor from Final Fantasy VI. Interceptor is indeed a dog introduced in the sixth installment as Shadow's own sidekick. And, much like any loyal canine, he comes to his owner whenever he's needed most. And we barely see him leave his side. Heck, when Shadow's past as a deadly train robber caught up with him, he ordered Interceptor to remain by his daughter Realm's side. But as loyal as he is, he would rather accompany his master, and they've been inseparable ever since. He's also a nice little buddy to have around in battle, Whenever Shadow's a part of the team, as he gives the command for him to run, then bite the enemy, and return to his person. By the time the Returners went back to his hometown, Interceptor recognized Realm and Strago by Shadow's scent, and we've realized that these two were actually related to Interceptor's owner. He also served as a guard dog as he hesitated to protect Realm while Shadow was out. Then he managed to save her from a burning building, always sticking by her side. Unless he was ordered otherwise. In the world of Ruin, Interceptor was found in the Velt Cave barking at the team, signaling to follow him and lead them to his wounded owner. They recovered in Thamassa till they left for the Colosseum, then were recruited to fight Kefka as the new god of magic. As the tower collapsed, it was seen that Interceptor stayed with Shadow till he offered to die there, and the poor dog was masterless, then reunited with Realm as the team escaped. Interceptor is a perfect example on how a man's best friend is portrayed in real life. He can be playful when he's around the innocent Realm, he is very protective and loyal when he's always around Shadow, to the point on assisting him, and he acts as an excellent watchdog, as he watches over Shadow and his daughter whenever they seem to be in peril. Like I said, it's unfortunate we hardly get to see actual animals and their upstanding traits. And he takes the spot at number 6 for all his valiant deeds. Of course, we cannot forget the loyal horse from the Legend of Zelda series, Epona, Link's valuable steed in all his adventures, as well as their multiple incarnations. She was a cute though shy pony raised in Malon Ranch by Malon in Ocarina of Time. As Link approaches her again at the corral, Epona appears frightened from strangers. However, thanks to the signature melody that is said to soothe her, and taught by Malin's mom, Link and Epona became inseparable. Though she was too young to ride, unless you would consider her a Majora's Mask. Seven years later, Link is able to ride Epona thanks to her song, as she always comes to his aid whenever he plays it in the overworld. Thanks to their teamwork, they were able to defeat the treacherous Ingo in two races, and escape from the corrupt corral as well as his never-ending abuse. Since then, Epona is excellent as a travel companion. Epona has also appeared in other installments such as Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess. Heck, she proves to be quite a brave combatant and she assists Link in attacking Ganondorf in his own dark steed. It's no wonder she's named after the Celtic goddess of both mares and foals as she's a very dependable ally, and she wins the fifth spot. When it comes to Pokemon, animals are usually the first thing we see. There are tons of pocket monsters to choose from, each sharing traits from different species. 
We always see the mascot Pikachu in our constant appearances. So I'm going to take a break and focus on one of the smaller guys, such as the original Firestarter Pokemon, Charmander. Much like the aforementioned Octoban, it was love at first sight. He's the adorable Fire Salamander from the Kanto region and is used by so many trainers, including Ash in the anime. Charmander was abandoned by his selfish trainer Damien till he realized how much of a narcissist he truly was, just leaving him for dead on account of his weakness. It is said that a Charmander dies if its tail flame should go out. After he let loose all his rage onto him, he was been one of Ash's most competent companions next to Pikachu, even taking out a thrashing primate and burning a whole swarm of insane executor. Until he evolved into the hot-headed Charmeleon and soon Charizard. I was a little disappointed he wasn't in the first movie, till I noticed that he has already transformed into this disobedient dragon. At least Richie stuck with his own named Zippo till he evolved into a more loyal Charmeleon. Charmander is cute, heroic, competent, and his greatest strength lies in his own speed and special attack. It may be difficult to use when he starts out in the Kanto games, but he's always worth it. Charmander has always been one of my all-time favorite fire starters even on my Reboot Multi-Universe, and in my Lost Ocarina of Time crossover. Much like in Pokemon Snap, he too resides in a volcanic area, specifically in Death Mountain. I happen to love Charmander over his evolved counterparts, and he's number 4 in the Kanto Pokedex, coincidentally taking the lucky number on my list. Aside from Yoshi, there is another certain animal most common in the Mario series. The most frequent baddies next to the Goombas, the Koopa Troopa. Since their debut in the original Mario Bros, they've been encountered multiple times in all installments. They happen to be anthropomorphic turtles, also known as Koopas, with removable shells. And whenever Mario stumps on them, they usually disappear or become severed from their shells, leaving them defenseless. Poor Koopas. I feel kind of bad for them. They're either green or red, and some of them can even fly. And they're often classified as foot soldiers working for Bowser. But not all of them are entirely merciless. There are also a few more friendly incarnates, such as Koopa the Quick, who challenges Mario in a foot race, as well as Cooper who joins Paper Mario's team until he gets his stolen shell back by the Fuzzies. Plus, their shells make us good weapons for Yoshi to have as he gains various abilities from them, such as flight, fireballs, thwomping enemies, or just a simple projectile. Not to mention, we also use shell surfing to get across lava and very difficult environmental hazards. Koopa Troopers have always been my favorite main in the original Super Mario Kart, as well as Super Circuit. Sadly, the Mario series has become lesser interesting as of late, and I always feel bad whenever I have to stomp on those simpletons. Because of their constant appearances, and they happen to be fun whenever they're usable, or on the good side, I will always adore them and they take the spot at number 3. A lot of people, especially Oscar, consider Donkey Kong to be the main animal in the original and the country series, as well as their spin-offs. Well, let me ask you this. Would DK be able to save Kong Island and be a successful hero and sometimes villain on his own? Of course not! DK always has allies to back him up, whether it be his own clan or the Animal Buddies. 
and one in particular has always been an instant favorite of mine, Ramby the Rhino. I said Ramby, not Bambi. Since his first appearance in Donkey Kong Country at the very first level, Ramby has been an absolute blast to use running around. He is a fast and strong tank of an ungulate, bashing through baddies and revealing items and bonus levels. He is accelerating to use, even in other games. So too, in Diddy's conquest at Pirate Panic doing his usual dirty work, ramming through anything in his path. I especially liked his ability to supercharge, when the player holds down the A button winding him up, and as it is released, he plows through a whole line of enemies, even bashing through a bonus level and a wall in his way. Also in Diddy's Conquest, Diddy and Dixie encounter some buddy barrels in which they can transform into their corresponding buddies. Rambi doesn't always have to be mounted in order to be used. Either way, he's still awesome. Aside from his strength, Rambi can be fast too. Especially while he was tested in the Lost World level, Run Rambi Run. Alas... He never made an appearance in Dixie's Double Trouble since he was replaced by the lousy elephant, Ellie, who only can shoot water and is afraid of mice. Plus, she's not as much of a joy to use as she's not as mighty as Rambi. Heck, Rambi was how my fascination with Rhino started since I was a little kid, and I grow fond of them ever since. By how they sound, act, look, and the fact they're just one of the most powerful animals on Earth. I really despise those poachers that hunt them for their ivory horns. Bottom line, I always love the animal buddies, and Rambi has been my topmost member. Every time I see and play as him, I grow more ecstatic for this awesome herbivore. And so he takes the cake at second place. I can only think, of one other fantastic animal. Miles Tails Brower. That's right, my all time favorite animal in video games is Tails, also known as Miles Prower. A pun on words for miles per hour. Tails is a very cute and young fox introduced in Sonic 2, a concept that was made by Yasushi Yamaguchi as he was chosen to make a character for the sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog as a companion and a ploy to drive in new viewers. Certainly got me interested. Much like most of the aforementioned animals, he has become irresistible. He became an instant favorite as soon as I decided to play as him, even though he doesn't fly until Sonic 3. Since then, he's been my main in the entire franchise, no matter what the installment. It's always a pleasure to play as Tails, whether it be his speed, his character, or even when he flies and covers great mileage. He's not only a runner, but also a pilot and inventor. Even when he's in a tornado or his own mech is just incredible. Although Sonic 2 was my first encounter, his debut game was actually Sonic 2 for the Game Gear. Though I was pretty upset as I can't use him on account of his capture by Robotnik. My worries had subsided as I always adored him in the secondary protagonist, in the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog series. Too bad the show never finished its run. I hope the Sonic movie would settle this. The second one, anyway. Because of his niches, my pipe dream was to always have Tails team up with another favorite Fox, Fox McCloud. Please, Nintendo, make their camaraderie canon, and make him an official smasher while you're at it. He does grow as a hero and is voiced by so many child stars, even for Sonic X. While he's young, that doesn't mean he shouldn't love someone. 
I mean, I too support the infamous Tails Cosmo pairing to this very day. I always loved Tails, so much so that my original screen name was going to be Super Tails, but I decided to scrap it for the Ekron. I also thought of my first song parody since I was six, and developed it a few years ago, known as my two-tailed fox. He's accelerating to watch and use. He always has the potential to be better, he's a cute, lovable, and relatable character, and his portrayal never gets old nor tiring. I am the Ekron Rider, and Tails has and forever will be my main and my favorite character ever in the Sonic series, and thus he's my favorite animal in video games for all time.